You're watching KPPS, Channel 8. Production and broadcast costs for Sedgwick County Commission meetings have been underwritten by Sedgwick County. KPTS welcomes comments from the public on its broadcast of the County Commission hearings. Viewers are invited to write to County Commission Broadcast, KPTS, 320 West 21st Street, Wichita, Kansas, 67203. Good morning, I'm Christy Zukovich. Welcome to the December 9th Sedgwick County Commission meeting. We are glad you're joining us today. And of course, we use this time to let you know about a couple of things going on around our community. And commissioners, the arena was packed last week with lots of Garth Brooks e e concerts and events. And this Saturday, it's going to be packed again because we've got the Wichita State Shockers who will be playing on Saturday. And then, of course, we have K-State basketball coming right on the heels of that on December 19th. So, again, lots of good excitement in downtown. Wichita and at our uh, Intrust Bank Arena and hope that you all will either be at the game or tuning in and watching the Shockers to move on to another win. So uh, glorious day outside today. Great weather. It's a great day to enjoy the winter Wednesdays out at the Sedgwick County Zoo. It's just $2.50 admission on Wednesdays. So hope folks will go out and enjoy. And of course, commissioners also remind you that Exploration Place has a holiday, holiday dome. Boy, that's hard for me to say this early. Holiday dome theater film. So if you're looking forward to get in a little bit in that spirit, maybe the weather hasn't cooperated quite yet, that is a place where you can get into that spirit of the holiday season. On today's agenda, commissioners, we do have a consideration of a zone change. We will also hold a post-annexation public hearing. We will have presentation of career development certificates for our employees. We will have a consideration of a grant for our rural transportation program. And as I told you, it's come to that time where it's time for the road and bridge show. So that will, we really want folks to make sure that they tune in and see how our public works folks have used our funds, their tax dollars, to help with our um, infrastructure. But first, it is the season. And commissioners, I will not be here next week for your last meeting of the year, so I had to bring my holiday cheer to, to share with you this week. So I have a little gift for you, as I have in the past, to show my affection and love for all of you. And, and uh, so 
you know, I, I can drag this out or we can just get right on to it. Can and, you, you know, it? Chairman Ransaw, you're going to be last. I, I have You're used to it by I'm now. Used to it. Okay. All right. Commissioner Norton, you have a little gift in front of you, and there is a little note on the inside. So if you would go first. I will go first since you laid it on me. It's a pony. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't read it. White hair, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and you bought it at Target, really? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is there a... That gift said you There is all a karma over. in this world, is there not? There is. <clears throat> Thank you very much. You know, sometimes you get out there and you're looking for that one gift that has somebody's name written all over it, and that one had kind of your face, so that's why I went for it. Well, uh, you know, this time of year I'm so honored to have l little kids run up to me and grab my legs and think that I'm somebody other than who I am. And uh, the parents are just, you know, say, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, and I say, why would anybody in the world not love children, loving the most honored person this time of year? So I'm glad to be in the company of that person. So. Okay. Well, Merry Christmas Whoever to Whoever that might be. <laughs> <laughs> That's for the kids watching Sesame Street. want to be watching Sesame Street right now. Thank you, Christy. You're welcome. Commissioner Peter John. Well, Again, there's a little note for you in there. <laughs> Maybe you'll win big and help us with our budget and it's fake lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could gamble G A M B O L uh, with uh, with with uh, this type of uh, Gift. Thank you, Christy. You are welcome. We know that you always keep a keen eye to our finances, so I always try to find something with a little money connected in there for you. So, all right, we're skipping over you, Chairman. Commissioner Howell, welcome. It's the first year for your present. I cannot imagine what you've done here. And there's a little note for you in there. No, so. I, I, so I should open this now. Uh huh. Okay. Um, it's always the first present of the season, it's always the funnest one, right? Well, I hope so. All right. Okay, the note says, the air is full of ideas. They are knocking you in the head all the time. Henry Ford, <laughs> light bulb. <laughs> I have to, I'm, I'm going to use this, I promise. Well, so. you know, I, what I've thought is you are bringing us ideas every day, and I'm, I'm really thinking that maybe your water bill is really high. If you're having all these ideas while you're in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> that is the best place for ideas, you know. It, it is, so. Well, Merry Christmas well, to you. Thank you very, very much. Mm -hmm. Very thoughtful. Commissioner Unruh, it's okay, your turn, I've, and you I've, have a note as well. I've been waiting patiently. Uh-oh. For a true Wildcat fan from head to toe, go Cats, and don't forget to wear it on January the 2nd. And there's some Ar purple Argyle socks. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I will wear them. <laughs> I thought, you know, you got to show all that purple pride, so. I'll do it. January the 2nd so is a bowl game for the Cats, and they're going to need everybody rooting for them. <laughs> well, we will be there, so Merry Christmas to you. Thank you, Christy. And Chairman Ransaw, I always have such fun, and, and I can tell you it is not the same gift that you've gotten the last two years. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Coloring is supposed to help with stress. <laughs> A Star Wars coloring book. No crayons, though, I noticed. I, yeah, no crayons. What's up with that? I was on a budget this year. 
<laughs> Mr. Manager, make sure those get back put up, get put back on the budget next year. All right. I, and and there's really, I, I'm not trying to say anything about Darth Vader being on the front. It just just there's no connection there. But it does supposed there. They do say that coloring is supposed to help relax you. So well, this is about the guys coming to the rescue here, right? And that's right. So all right. Well, happy well, holidays you, to you, you and uh, I think you can probably get this meeting underway. All right, with that, we'll call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Sedgwick County Commissioners for December 9th, 2015. Madam Clerk, first item. Invocation to be led by Pastor Ron Prock, Olivet Baptist Church. Please remain standing for the flag salute. Show me your prayer, please. Father, this group is gathered today to do business for our community. These men standing before us are men that uh, we elected, but they're men that you chose to be in these positions. So I pray that you give them wisdom and courage. You give them discernment. I pray that you would help them be faithful men to the task to which they've been commissioned. Lord, I thank you for others who serve our community, the first responders who go in when we're coming out, who are there to help when uh, chaos reigns. I thank you for their faithfulness, for their sacrifice. Lord, I thank you for this time of, of year, this season, when we remember the greatest gift ever given. And I pray that we would be faithful to, to that task, that we would give to those who need, that we'd be faithful to serve those who need to be served. And we do it in the name of, of the one who came to give his life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor, for being here today. Next item, please. Roll call. Commissioner Unruh. Present. Commissioner Norton. Present. Commissioner Howell. Present. Commissioner Peter John. Present. Chairman Ransop. Present. Next item. Public agenda. We did have one individual signed up, but I think he's elected to wait to another day to speak, so uh, we'll move on to the next item, please. Appointments. Item A, resolution appointing Gary Bond to the Sedgwick County Public Building Commission. Mr. Chairman, Eric Yost, County Councilor. Item A is a resolution appointing Mr. Gary Bond to the Public Building Commission. He will be filling out the term uh, created by the resignation of Mr. Stevens. That term will expire February of 2019. He is Commissioner Peter John's appointment. I think the paperwork's all in order, and uh, I would urge rec I would urge uh, adoption of the resolution. Commissioner Peter John. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate Mr. Bond's willingness to serve and fill out the rest of this term, and I'm going to make a motion to nominate him to this position on the Public Building Commission. Second. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, call the vote. Commissioner Unruh. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Howell. Aye. Commissioner Peter John. Aye. Chairman Ransaw. Aye. And Mr. Bond is here today to be sworn in by our county clerk. Good morning, Commissioners. All right. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Kansas, and faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Sedgwick County Public Building Commission, so help me God. I do. Congratulations, Kate. Thank you. I just want to quickly say thank you to Kelly for swearing me in, but also to Carl for asking me to serve on this committee. And if uh, is any, I wanted to see if anybody had any questions for me today. No, I think some of you might be familiar with me. I ran for Wichita City Council this last spring, so I had a lot of information out in the public, so I think I, I was a lot of familiar faces around here, so I was looking for a place to serve, and Carl was helping me out to start this. Thank you. Hey, Commissioner Peter John. Well, thank you, Gary, and uh, uh, I appreciate your hard work and your interest in the community and uh, your business knowledge, and that would be appreciated, and I want to wish you the best in this new, new position. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Okay. Next item, please. Planning Department, Item B, Zone Change from SF-20 Single Family Residential to the Planned Unit Development Number 47 District on property located 1,600 feet south of West Highway 54400 
and on the east side of South 135th Street West. Dale Miller planning staff, uh, as you can see, the application area is the, uh, the area outlined in the, the blue uh, on the slide. This is a request to rezone property uh, from single family 20 to the planned unit development district, which would allow for a multifamily residential complex to be developed and that the, uh, the applicant wants to include as part of the uh, project for the residents of the apartment complex only a car wash and dog runs. And uh, so they filed the planned unit development request. It has gone to the planning commission. Uh, they recommended approval subject to the two conditions that were contained in the staff report. Staff is recommending approval. Um, there was uh, there was no one present at planning commission to discuss the item other than the applicant, and we have not received any protests from any adjoining property owners. As you can see here on the zoning, there is a, uh, to the north, it's still zoned single family 20. Uh, to the east, uh, the property there has been uh, rezoned to limited commercial, subject to a community unit plan. The, uh, the property to the south, immediately to the south, is part of the uh, rails to trail system uh, that goes from West Wichita on out into western Sedgwick County and then below that is a proposed single-family subdivision. To the west across the street is a an existing asphalt and concrete plant that is uh, zoned limited industrial and then of course further to the north the pink area is zoned general <coughs> commercial that fronts Kellogg. Uh, let's see I go to the site plan if Aerial depicts the, the way it looks today. It is mostly farm ground out there. Uh, even the subdivision to the south has not been developed. Uh, the asphalt plant is there, as you can see. And that's looking at the site today. Uh, and with that, I try and answer questions if you have any. At this point, I'd like to uh, ask if there's anyone in the public who'd like to speak on this item. Anyone in the public like to speak? Seeing none, looks like we have a few commissioners that have questions. Okay. okay. Commissioner Peter John? Yes, uh, just a technicality, but I want to understand and make sure I, th this approval that we have in front of us is on county property, but is this considered adjacent to the city immediately to the south with that little s strip of uh, uh, what you described as the, uh, the rail to trail corridor in between? Is this actually considered adjacent to the city of Wichita uh, for, for, from, from your department's purposes, Dale? Uh, from in the past, from le uh, legal staff, what they've always told us, if the city limit line is on one side of a right-of-way, then the property on the north side is also eligible for being annexed. However, it is not clear to me whether the, the old abandoned railroad it would technically be considered right-of-way still. Um, that may be the, a question more for legal, but uh, they've told us that, for example, if, if the, the uh, rails to trails had been a public street, then the property would be eligible for annexation, but uh, I don't know if the, the old rails to trails is still considered right of way or not. Okay, well, I was just trying to understand for the purposes in terms of the development, and I just state for the record, I haven't had any calls either for or against uh, this proposal. Uh, and Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy if it's appropriate to make a motion that uh, to adopt the findings of the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission and uh, approve the zone change subject to PUD number 47 with whole publication of the resolution until the plat is recorded and uh, authorize the chairman to sign uh, the resolution. I will second. Commissioner Norton. Uh, the, the two things that always worry me about these, and there's, there's some water that runs through there, that will all, the drainage and everything will be handled through platting, is that correct? Yes, at the time of platting they will have to submit a drainage plan that would have to be reviewed and approved by the appropriate city, uh, city or county engineer. Okay, yeah. and, and it looks like that water comes right off the Calf Skin Creek, and that's always been problematic through parts of that West Wichita area, is that correct? 
I believe so. Okay. Uh, what about future ingress and egress off of Kellogg? As we move out further, Kellogg is going to obviously widen. Uh, has that been thought about, or will that happen during platting also? During platting, they would review that. The applicant's agent is here. Uh, if you had a specific question about whether they were concerned with whether the proposed improvements would impact it or not, uh, but Russ Avey is here if, if that's the question that he could answer for you. Well, it, it's pretty raw land, so I, you, we have plenty of time to plant it, but I always, Correct. we need to get ahead of the curve on that because so many times when you st start going to four lanes and control, some controlled access and turn lanes, uh, the right-of-way becomes a problem. Growth is impeded on what we really need to do, and hopefully that's not the case here. I mean, I'm, I don't have any problems with what we're doing today. I just want to make sure that when do we look at those kind of things that can be impact the growth on that area. Yeah, that's all I have. Commissioners, yeah. are there any other, any other questions? We do have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, call the vote, please. Commissioner Unruh. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Howell. Aye. Commissioner Peter John. Aye. Chairman Ransoff. Aye. Thank you, Dale. Thank you. Next item, please. New business. Item C. Post annexation public hearing. City of Wichita annexation resolution number 12 195. Good morning, Commissioners. Justin Wagoner, Assistant County Counselor. Uh, what's in front of you today is the post-annexation hearing uh, regarding a three-year service plan uh, for properties that were annexed by the City of Wichita in 2012. Uh, and just to clarify something for the record, that it's actually Wichita, City of Wichita Ordinance 49-387. The resolution number that was cited in the agenda was an earlier version of publication the city had. So I just did want to clear that up. Um, in referring to the map that's on the screen, uh, the properties that were annexed uh, are included in yellow uh, and then also the, the red portion of the road on 135th Street and also 21st Street are, is also included. And maybe if, if it scrolled down a little bit, let me do that here. Uh, you can see on the south there's also two commercial properties uh, to the south. The five properties in the north are all residential in nature. Uh, the area is generally described as being between 13th Street and 21st Street North, and it's just off of uh, 135th Street West. Uh, the, on the map, the orangish area indicates the city limits of Wichita, uh, whereas the white uh, properties are in the unincorporated area. The, uh, for this matter, your role is to determine whether the service plan uh, services have been provided by the city in accordance with that service, the three-year service plan. Uh, it also involves a public hearing, uh, and the Board of County Commissioners acts as a quasi-judicial body. Uh, you should disclose any ex parte communications that you've had on this matter. Uh, if you've become aware uh, of any additional information on this matter outside of the hearing process that you want to consider as part of the record, you, could, you should also disclose that on the record today. By statute, three years after the annexation, again, you all complete the review. Uh, the statutes require that notice of the hearing be provided to the property owners whose properties were annexed. That has been completed. In addition to that, we send out a pre-hearing questionnaire to all the property owners. Uh, seven of those were sent out. Uh, the only response that we received was from the Sedgwick County Electrical Cooperative. Uh, they noted that there was a there were street lights that were to be provided in 2013 that had not yet been installed. And that was in August of this year that they provided that response. Uh, since then, in November, the city of Wichita has installed those street lights. Um, and then the city of Wichita uh, does have a representative here today to answer any questions about what services have been provided uh, in this matter. And the service plan requirements that were included uh, stretched from street maintenance to ditch cleaning, uh, culvert cleaning, water mains, fire protection, police protection, uh, city building code enforcement, city health code enforcement, uh, minimum housing, code and zoning enforcement and of course the installation of the street lights has already been mentioned now, there are also additional services available upon request uh, or petition of the property owners uh, the city's service plan that was formulated in 2012 substantially met the requirements established by statute the uh, it's my understanding again that the city does have somebody present today uh, to answer any questions you may have unless you have any questions for me my recommendation would be that you open the public hearing uh, if you have any uh, ex parte communications that you disclose those on the record, uh, that uh, you also open it up to any comments from the public, any of the property owners, I should say, 
uh, and to uh, the city if they have any as well. Did you have any additional questions for me at this time? Just one question. So we're going to hold a public hearing with respect to which the ordinance 49-387? That's correct. And not the 12-1? That's correct, Mr. Okay. Um See no questions for you. I'll go ahead and open up uh, the public hearing with respect to Wichita Ordinance 49-387. And at first, I'd like to see if there's anyone from the general public who would like to speak on on this issue. Anyone from the general public who'd like to speak? All right. Uh, would anyone from the city of Wichita like to speak? You don't have to, but you can if you. Um. <laughs> Mark Elder with the City of Wichita. I don't really have anything to add to that, but I will stand for any questions if you do have some. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Peter John. Well, I can throw out a quick question. Um, I was curious in light of the uh, City Council action yesterday voting to raise water rates, would uh, uh, would that have any impact on the figures here on the for water or sewer services? And I assume that the residences would have to petition to get city water and sewer. Am I correct? Uh, that? That's correct. And that was how this was drafted was uh, they, they had service through um, their existing and if they wouldn't to have city service, they would need to petition to have the city connection. Um, so if they were to petition, they'd be subject to the city's water rates. Did the rates change with the uh, city water and sewer rate? Increase? I apologize. I did not catch that yesterday. As far I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. I did not catch that uh, yesterday oh. at the meeting. But Okay. Well, I just wanted to get it on the record. I mean, obviously, water and sewer services are an important part for, mm -hmm. for folks on these hearings. Thank you. Commissioner Howell. Mr. Chairman, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have another question for the same gentleman. Um, are there existing structures on these properties being annexed? Uh, I believe so. Those are um, four residential properties. Um, so I believe they are. Uh, so there, there's five properties to the, to the north on this map and a, kind of a larger property to the south. Is there something at the, on that larger property near the intersection on, on the uh, I believe that's the Cedric County Electrical Cooperative. Okay. I am curious as to why the, it looks like a sporadic selection of properties there uh, on the north. You've, you've selected five, but then you skip one. There's already one property already annexed, I, I guess. Um, I'm a little surprised by the, the selection of properties. Can you explain that anyway? Um, my understanding, I, I was not the one that originally drafted this, but my understanding was those properties were needed to have the connection for the annexation. As far as if you look at the street, uh, it, it's the abutting of that as far as on the west side of 135th, it's already city of Wichita, but to continue the improvements along 135th north, uh, you had to have city property to make that full connection. So there, it wasn't necessary to annex the rest of those properties to do those improvements or to annex the street for the improvements is, would be my understanding of that from what uh, I've gathered. So the intent of this is there's going to be some type of city services run along it, that the, the intent of the annexation was actually to make the improvements along 135th and so that those improvements were done uh, and those properties are annexed in order to do the complete uh, reconstruction 135th North from 13th to 21st Street. Okay, and then the 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 properties that are not being annexed that are adjacent to the ones that are being annexed are, are their structures are there also. I, again, on this map, I'm not right. seeing there's three um, properties right along the road there that are that are somehow different than the other ones. I I did not verify that, so I I can't give you a, a firm answer. I I would assume that there are uh, structures on there, but I can't give you a firm answer. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Peter John, if I could jump in, mm -hmm. I'm very familiar with the stretch of 135th Street, and uh, to answer Commissioner Howell's questions, there are residences along there, uh, some which would not be added into the city, but the city has a fire station just north of this site on the east side of 135th, south of 21st, and uh, uh, the city has done a major, uh, major projects both for stormwater and repaving 135th Street mm -hmm. and it's been a major city project it looks really good I'll give you okay. a pat on the back for that you can take across the street I'll pass that along to the ones more responsible for, <laughs> okay. for those improvements but, but, thank but you. to answer Commissioner Howell's question that is a residential area and it, it has been mixed but uh, uh, but it was also subject there there had been some flood issues back in 2009 mm -hmm. and, and in the spring of 2009 and uh, uh, and I know our public works area, uh, as well as uh, uh, work to get that fixed. Uh, I'm looking at 
uh, Mr. Spears on that point. If he's got anything to add, he can jump in here if I get off track on it. But, uh, but this has been an area that's been kind of in transition between being in the county and being in the city. And it's one place along 21st there where you can basically come into the city, leave the city, and then come back into the city of Wichita, mm -hmm. all within a stretch of about a, maybe about a mile or maybe a mile and a half of uh, driving on 21st Street. So uh, I do plan, I, just for the record, I haven't gotten any call, calls on this uh, pro or con mm -hmm. uh, uh, on it, but I, I do plan, plan to be supportive of the motion when one gets made, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions from commissioners? Right. I don't see any. Uh, I, I'll uh, w one last time ask is if there's any uh, com anyone from the public who'd like to speak on this issue. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing in regard to Wichita Ordinance 49-387 and reserve further comments to the bench. Commissioners, what's the will of the board? Commissioner Peter John. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to make a motion that we make the required statutory finding and uh, 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 take, take whatever approval is necessary and authorize you to sign any paperwork that needs to be signed. I would second. We have a motion and a second. And commissioners, I just would add, I think the motion, perhaps if it would just clarify that the city of Wichita has provided the services included in the service plan, just to clarify a bit. Okay, well, I'll, I'll take, treat that as a friendly amendment. To Commissioner Unruh seconds will agree with it. I would agree that the city has provided the services. Thank you. Are we okay, Madam Clerk? Yes, Mr. Chairman. All right. Please call the vote. Commissioner Unruh. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Howell. Aye. Commissioner Peter John. Aye. Chairman Ransoff. Aye. Thank you both very much for being here. Next item, please. Item D, presentation of career development certificates. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Greg Baker, and I'm here with Cheryl Orm from Human Resources this morning, along with a very special group of employees. Um, uh, this morning, uh, we're here to both recognize and, and thank these employees uh, uh, for their uh, hard work and dedication to career development uh, and their career advancement. We have a total of 19 employees uh, this quarter who've actually earned one or more career development certificates and we're very, very pleased that nine of them are able to attend this morning's presentation. Uh, we actually have four career development certificates available, uh, supervisory de management development, diversity, professional development, and transitioning to supervisor. Uh, for each certificate, the employees uh, complete a series of both online and in-class required and elective courses. Today, we are presenting certificates to the following individuals. Terry Agnew, diversity. James Arntz, professional development. Brandy Breeden, professional development. Tanya Glover, Professional Development. Haley Greer, Professional Development. Kimberly Haas, Supervisory Management Development. Jamie Hurdle, Diversity. Congratulations. Rachel Reed Robertson, Professional Development. Congratulations. And Laura Schmitz, both Supervisory Management Development and Diversity. Thank you. And again, we'd like to congratulate these employees for their commitment to continuous improvement. We'd like to thank those who support the career development process, including their supervisors and managers. Um, and thank you, commissioners, for providing us with the time to recognize them this morning. Well, thank you very much for being here. And the manager's going to shake everybody's hands. We want to say thank you to everyone for your hard work and your commitment to improving yourselves and for all the hard work that you do for Cedric County for, and for our citizens. We appreciate it. We, we greatly appreciate it. And 
Commissioner Henry has a few words to say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I just wanted to add my congratulations to you personally. I know that this is a, um, uh, an accomplishment for, e for each of you uh, on an individual basis, but um, looking at it from a commissioner standpoint, I'm really grateful that you're willing to invest this time and energy to help make our government a better organization and therefore better able to serve our citizens. So uh, congratulations to you on all those levels. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, next item, please. Item E, consideration of a grant application to the Kansas Department of Transportation in the amount of $1,120,000 for the funding of Coordinated Transit District 39, which includes the Sedgwick County Rural Transportation Program and other participating counties. Good morning, Commissioners. Annette Graham, Department on Aging. This is a one-year grant renewal that would provide continued funding for specialized general public transportation to rural Sedgwick County citizens. Program services are available in all unincorporated in all incorporated cities, including Andale, Bentley, Cheney, Clearwater, Colwich, Garden Plain, Mount Hope, Sedgwick, Peck, and Viola, as well as 18 unincorporated areas. The renewal will continue to fund a volunteer, will also continue to fund a volunteer based transportation program provided in Bentley, Mount Hope, and Clearwater as part of our coordinated transit plan, which is included in the long range transfer plan transportation plan move 2040. The first agreement with the Kansas Department of Transportation was initiated by Sedgwick County in 1995. The grant application is due December 15th. We anticipate providing 6,000 trips with this grant. Um, during the previous year, 70% of the riders were seniors and 28% were disabled and 2% were other, as this is general population services. The majority of rides provided through this program are for medical and critical care issues such as grocery shopping, social service agent thing, and other things like that. So that's typically how those program services are are delivered. Um, the budget that you have in front of you also, uh, the total budget is $1,132,000. This also includes, this, uh, along with the Sedgwick County application, it also includes funding for the District 9, which is a coordinated transit district, and it includes awards that will be administered through Sedgwick County as the state designated District 9. Uh, this was changed during this year, and as you were aware, it included a, a larger number of organizations and counties this year. So the grant application provides for federal transportation funding for operation, administration, and capital assistance costs. Sedgwick County will be responsible for its matching funds only, as the other county agencies will provide matching funds for their awards independently. Sedgwick County Department on Aging mill levy funds were budgeted and approved in the 2016 department budget by the BOC on August 12, 2015, which included match for the Rural 5311 program. So to just connect, you have some information that talks about the grant funding application amounts by county agency that flow through Sedgwick County Department on Aging. That includes 169,903 coming for Sedgwick County Department on Aging, 114. <coughs> and $114,073 for Harvey County. Butler County is $101,420. The Cowley County Council on Aging, $208,724. The Harvey County Department on Aging, $100,376. Kingman County Council on Aging, $60,120. Futures Unlimited, $194,664. City of Kingman, $78,413. Twin Rivers Developmental, $91,307. With the total grant amount of $1,120,000. And then the Sedgwick County Anticipated Program Income uh, is $12,000 that gives that total amount. For the uh, General Rural Transportation Grant, that grant period begins July 1st, 2016, goes through June 30th, 2017. 
The grant amount is $850,000 from FTA, which is passed through dollars through KDOT. That is for 50% operations, administration 80%, and capital. There are $270,000 state KDOT funds and 12,000 program income. Uh, the source of the matching fund is Aging Mill Levy, and that includes um, the, the $107,404,000 and administration for administration and 16,318 for fleet acqu acquisition. Um, I would request that you uh, approve this and would be happy to answer any questions. Commissioner Peter John. Thank you. Uh, for the record, could you go into a little bit more detail on uh, location and, and Futures Unlimited and uh, Twin Rivers Developmental since those are there are two sums and they're fairly significant. I'll have my staff answer that <coughs> detail. Thank you. This is Candace Donison. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, with uh, Cali County, um, Twin Rivers is um, with Cali County and then also Futures Unlimited is with Sumner County. So. Thank you. No. Any other questions, Commissioners? Commissioner Howell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> thank you um, for the good presentation. Can you talk a little bit, uh, there was a, a similar program that was just um, lost some funding from the City of Wichita. They made it, I think, a reduction of, was $105,000 that was transferred to the Department of Aging? There was a um, loss of funding that ends at the end of December, and that was for what is referenced as newly urbanized transportation program. And that was uh, those communities surrounding Wichita that were based on the 2000 census were defined as part of the metropolitan statistical area. So the funding that we received to provide that transportation for citizens that resided in that kind of the donut around Wichita, it provided funding for us to uh, provide transportation for them to come into the city for services and medical appointments, things like that. That funding was ended. Uh, the city decided to no longer fund that program, and we had been providing that program since it was initiated in 2004. I believe um, so that is no longer available for that area does that program still exist then but it's just re it's reduced or has it been eliminated it has been eliminated okay is there any, any overlap between this program and what that program had provided as far as where they provided transportation services no, there, there is not because this funding is specifically for what is defined as rural, the general rural areas. So those areas are not considered rural, rural any longer. Okay. All right. Well, um, I, uh, I guess just a general comment. There are, there are people out there that are very dependent on the services we provide. And to provide the services for a period of time and then, then remove them, I think, creates a, a – well, number one, it creates dependency, and then number two, creates a – a, uh, a problem for those folks that are now, now dependent on that service. And so to me, I'm very disappointed in the, in the, uh, in the loss of service to, especially to the areas in my district, Mulvane I'm thinking about is a, I have a lot of folks in Mulvane and, and, and I think other places around District 5 that have to use that other service. And I don't think this provides any service to the area in my district at all that I can see here. I'm still supportive of this, um, but I guess I'm, I'm still looking at a, a solution for the loss of service that was that was provided before, and I don't think this is that this is not the solution to that problem. This is not. We did have some funding, some other resources that were available. So when we sent letters out to the individuals that would be impacted by the loss of that program, we did for those people that met certain criteria, such as seniors or di or individuals with disabilities, they might have still been eligible for some other services. Of course, that service is limited. Uh, because we already provide that service, but we sent that letters out saying that they might be eligible for some other program and that they were encouraged to submit their application so we could determine eligibility. That would be uh, seniors and dis disabled, uh, and it would be for medical only services. So the previous program was not limited to just medical transportation. Right. Well, well I, that answers my question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Norton. I'd follow up a little bit on what Commissioner Howell was talking about. Uh, 
I think there's going to be a time when we're going to have to enter into conversations with the city of Wichita, the other small cities that fall in the metro area, not into the rural area, and, and start thinking about a regional transit system. Uh, we know that the city of Wichita has struggled with, with funding, fully funding the, the internal metro system, and now there's been some loss to the outskirts of areas that used to be rural. When I first became a commissioner, Derby and Hayesville and Goddard and Valley Center and Park City and Bel Air were all part of the rural uh, paratransit and transit system. The census changed that, I think 2004, 2005. They became part of the metro transit system. Uh, the city of Wichita contracted with Sedgwick County to pro provide that, and now that funding has started to denigrate and go away. And if we're going to serve the metro area, which we represent, whether we like it or not, we represent those folks too in, in cities, small cities, and even Wichita, I think we're going to have to think about a regional transit system where the city of Wichita, Sedgwick County, and those larger uh, class two and class three cities all participate because we're becoming a combined metro area. It's no longer that Bel Air and Valley Center and Park City and Goddard and Hayesville and Derby are detached and have some space where we're not part of the metro, they're rural, they're part of the metro complex and we need to be thinking about that. I know WAMPO has done a lot of work on that over the years, but more and more we're going to have to understand that we're going to have to be partners or we're going to have these huge gaps in services on the outer fringe and those those citizens uh, need as much transit as the inner city does in many cases, particularly in the disabled senior and uh, area where people may not have transportation and need to get to a job in the metro area. So uh, just a caution that in the next couple of years, we need to be thinking about what our role is in making this a fully functional transit system with a regional flair to it. So just a thought. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other comments from commissioners? Seeing none, what's the will of the board? Mr. Chairman, I uh, would move that we take the recommended action and approve the grant application. Second. Madam Clerk, call the vote, please. Commissioner Unruh. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Howell. Aye. Commissioner Peter John. Aye. Chairman Ransa. Aye. Thank you, Annette. Next item, please. Item F. 2015 Public Works Road and Bridge Show. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Commissioners David Spears, Director of Public Works. I'd like to report to you on the projects that were constructed in the year 2015, including roads, bridges, and preventive maintenance. Uh, this year we completed five miles of skim coating and 14 and a half miles of chip seal with our own county forces. In addition to these projects, the 2015 reconstruction uh, program can be summarized as follows. Seven and a half miles of roads were reconstructed by contract. Nine miles of roads were treated with hot mix recycling. Five miles of roads uh, had cement slurry treated base or what we call super seal were constructed. Uh, five and a half total miles of asphalt rejuvenation were done. 55 and a half miles of Nova chip was constructed, 11 miles of Bontec was constructed, and then we had a new, another new process. We had two new processes this year, and I'll get to those when we get to the show. Uh, two miles of roads were treated with cold mix recycling. Uh, seven bridges were constructed by contract, four bridges were constructed by our crews, and 46 and a half miles of rock shoulders were constructed. All of the projects are in accordance with Sedgwick County's Capital Improvement Program. In total, improvements were made to 108 miles of the 550 miles of paved road that Sedgwick County is responsible for. That means that 20% of the county's road system was improved in the year 2015. A memorandum depicting the expenditures on our projects was sent to you on December the 2nd. In general, $17,783,281 was budgeted in 2015. 
14,655,326 was the total amount expended on the projects, so we were under budget by $3,127,955. And once again, let me remind you that infrastructure is a mother's milk of economic development. And I want to thank Mata Roman and Larry Sanchez for putting together this PowerPoint, and Larry did all the numbers. Uh, now we're ready to view the uh, bridge show, the road and bridge show. This is a map of the whole county and everything that we did this year depicted in one color or another. And you can see that, well, you can't see, but we did 100, like I say, 20% of our roads had something done to them this year. That means every five years we've done something to every single road. And that's preventive maintenance, and, and that is the way you pre preserve your system and let it give it a longer life. Okay, these are the roads by contract. Uh, the one by Cessna you might not have heard of. We, we did not pay anything out of the county budget for that. That was special assessment paid for by Cessna. Just a little piece down on Ridge Road off of K42. But I'll show you some a couple of pictures of that. But here are the projects. Maple between 167th and 199th West, uh, then the Cessna project I just talked about, one, 135th between 71st and 95th, down to Clearwater, which completed, that was the next phase we did to the first part of 135th last year. And then also we partnered with Andover on a WAMPO project, uh, 159th Street East from the KTA up to 21st Street North, and that is just in process, and you can see all of them are under uh, budget. Uh, this is Maple during uh, construction between 167th and 199th. You see the before picture. Now that's the after. Now we have better shoulders, better ditches. So budgeted 3.2, Correo and Sons did this project and actual spent about two and a half, so we're under budget about $666,000. This is the little Cessna project, which just widened that out down to a driveway that Cessna had to one of their buildings. That's a before, and there's the after. This is 135th Street West, one of our bigger projects. It's between 71st and 95th. Uh, next year, we'll go on down to the final mile. This will be four. This is after. You see the difference with the nice road and the nice shoulders, wide ditches. APAC did this project, three and a half million dollar budgeted, came in at about three, savings of about 500,000. This is a, the county line road that we're partnering, a Wampo project with uh, Andover. Uh, we eat, well, basically what we did was each shared the matching uh, portion of the money coming down from KDOT. You see it's going to be a concrete road with curb and gutter. Four million from KDOT on that, and our locals shared about 520000 apiece. And we also had to get some right away on our side. It says asphalt rejuvenation. This is a process where the, it's, we use this mainly in curb and gutter areas, and it, the uh, color repaving comes through, and they grind, grind up one inch of the pavement, and they recycle that. That goes back down plus another inch 
of virgin material on, on that. So it's a very nice process. You can see before pictures here. This is up at uh, Colwich. And there's an after picture. This is down uh, south of Garden Plain off their main street, goes by the cemetery. <coughs> this road was in fairly bad shape. Looks like that now. Had a few base failures on it. This is 47th Street South between Oliver and the Arkansas River. This is a before. Before. This is after. They also mill over at the edge where the gutter is so that the pavement is not above the gutter. It comes down flush with the gutter. This is MacArthur uh, leading into Spirit. It's a before picture. It's an after. And this is Ridge Road between K96 and 53rd. Before. This is after. The road basically looks brand new when you're finished. It extends the life. And that was Cutler repaving, budgeted about 1.3, just came in slightly under that. The Sonova chip. It's one of our favorite products because it works so well. It's only a half inch thick, but it's made of a coarse graded rock. And it's put down with what's called a spray paver. And a, a spray paver puts down the uh, tack seal with the machine and lays, it, lays the uh, product right over that immediately. And there's all the locations, 55 and a half miles of this. We have had areas of, of this where we have used this that's lasted nine years. I'm not going to show you all of those projects, just give you a flavor of it. 343rd between 21st and 29th. Before pictures. So after. The, the other thing we like, about only half inch thick, we like that also because it doesn't raise the road except but a half an inch and you have to worry about your shoulder drop off. So that it's a really good product for as thin as it is. This is 391st West between 21st and 29th North. Oh, there's our guys uh, blowing out the cracks. We do a lot of the crack filling before the project starts, which is very important. Uh, some of the larger cracks, we have that contracted out. You see the after. And here's MacArthur between K42 and Hoover. Before pictures. After. This is 167th West Colwich Road between 61st Street North and K96. There's a bad crack. <laughs> Soon after. And this is hydraulic, about a half mile's worth up between 45th and 53rd. Befores. And after. The whole key to preventive maintenance is that you preserve your asset. You don't just let it uh, deteriorate where you have to grind it up and start all over. So a small investment now saves a big investment later. Uh, County Park, before, after.
151st West between 21st and just north of 29th Street North after 215th West between US 54 and 53rd Street North befores there's after uh, the other thing we're having to do now uh, after many years is a lot of the driveways have a drop off and so we are doing uh, any driveway that is asphalt we uh, build that up only to the right-of-way line we don't go clear up to their garage or anything like that so you you might be hearing from that from citizens the ones that are gravel we do not do but but we come back with our forces and put gravel on those and raise those up to the level so everything's level but the paved ones we do it's another after total all the 55 and a half miles about 3.6 million dollars <throat> So super seal roads, this is something that we've come up with and designed. Five miles. Uh, this 45th Street North between Ridge Road and Tyler, this was in pretty bad shape. All these, coal, this is a coal mix road that we're using this process on, which is a liquid cement slurry in the base and then we put on two chip seals and then an HA5 which is a black uh, uh, just a seal coat on top of that. There's a lot of patches and there's after the project is done. This gives a great base to add to in later years and it's, all of these aren't real smooth and not meant to be the, the, the object is we have 150 miles of coal mix roads and we're trying uh, as they're falling apart and we're trying to get them replaced with something that has a good base and these do and we, then we can start adding Nova chips or other processes on top of this as we go. This is 167th West. This is an old coal mix road and after we had built that there was a lot of uh, big truck traffic on it carrying heavy loads and they tore it up pretty good and so we decided this was a good candidate to do the super seal to and there's the result this is 87th Street South between Broadway and Seneca is after this is 85th Street North between Webb Road and Greenwich Road <clears throat> that's a before this was a gravel road it's a county road that is after we put our chat seals on there there's two chat seals on that and then you put the HA5 on top and it looks like that now this uh, 37th Street North between Mays Road and 119th West was a project a partnering project with Mays Wichita and the county you can see how bad this was the dust on the road potholes Drainage is bad, so you see the uh, property on each side of the road is higher than the road, and that's not good. Same same case there, washboarding, bad drainage. This one we're finished, and Mays is has they're very happy with it, and so is Wichita. The reason it's three parties is because each one has a little bit of that annex by it. Uh, Mays has some, Wichita has some. Part of the road was township. The county actually did not ha have any of the road. And Mays is going to maintain the road now that it's finished. 
and there's their contribution and then our contribution was the seals and the uh, HA5 on top. That's all five miles together uh, total about one and a half million. Now this is asphalt surface recycling. <clears throat> this is a new process we hadn't done and we were really happy with this. Uh, nine miles, one nine mile stretch. This takes a long what we call a train of equipment to do this so you, hit, you need long stretches like this works out more efficient than short ones and you'll see why. This will be four. Now that's the train. That's each piece of the equipment there. If I, I don't know if I can. Whoops. I'm going to go back. I'm looking for the mouse. Maybe you can't see that. But the first vehicle, each one of those has a heater and a propane tank on it. There's one, two, three, four. And each one of those heats up a half inch of the pavement and then there's a grinder behind it that grinds it up. And that's as deep as they can go because this is hot mix and it's very uh, strong material, hard to get through. So you can, you can see here where uh, that yellow piece of equipment there, it, this, is grinding up the machine. What's in front of it there was heating it up and so then they have a grinder behind each one of these heaters that does, we went down two inches so there's four of those. And all this does, it goes, it, it recycles. It takes up two inches and puts the two inches back. They rejuvenate it and put it back. There you see the big black tanks on top that has the rejuvenating oil in it that puts it back back in. It comes out as a windrow, see it there in the middle, right here. And then this white machine is a lay down machine and it goes out the back of that and then it goes right back down on the pavement. And then they take the roller over it and you have a completed product. And these are pictures of the road, the nine miles. This also, it stops a lot of the cracking when you do a process like this. It doesn't, it'll come back eventually, but it's, it slows it down tremendously. And that was uh, 953,000 budgeted and came in just a little over 900,000. So nine miles, you're looking at, you know, a hundred and uh, a little over 100,000 per mile for that, which is a really good cost and it looks new. And we're going to use that again next year on a long stretch uh, uh, going towards Clearwater. Now this is another new process we use this year and we're also excited about this. This was done, it's two miles uh, on uh, 55th Street South between 183rd and K42. There's a before. This is a coal mix road. So what this company does, well they do two or three things, but in this particular case what we did, as you know over the years we've been collecting our chips or our asphalt chips off of roads and because uh, they have a value and I've wanted to keep them and of course the guys are on me because we have all these chips taking up room and so we finally found a process that we, there have been many come to our attention but this one we thought would work and it does. So we had chips out at our Clonmel yard and they take those chips and they mix them with a rejuvenating oil and then they lay those chips down on this coal mix road. Those were hot mix chips but the process is coal mix so they lay those down on the uh, coal mix road and they put four inches down uh, in two two inch lifts. And when they're done it looks like that. Then we also put a seal on top of that and the HA5 just like we do the super seal. This company claims that, I say claims, we'll see, this will last ten years. Now the, the beauty, if that's right, that's going to help us on our coal mix roads to buy us time because we, we're going to do the super seal but this will buy us a lot of time uh, and that's, that's why we're excited about it.
So there was the cost for the two miles, about 125, 120,000 each. Okay, this is Bontech. 11 miles. Uh, Bontech is a one inch, there's B4 pictures, a one inch hot mix asphalt overlay. It's usually like a surface mix. BM1 is a surface mix before pictures. And it's put down with the spray paper, which is puts the tack down with the machine. So it's a really nice process. Like I say, it's one inch, one inch thick. Uh, this is 135th and got a lot of compliments on this. The same thing as 101st there. Uh, don't really know why that happens, but we, sometimes on certain roads people call in. I don't know if it's the amount of traffic or, or what, but uh, Mata just happened to be out there when uh, our guys were trimming those trees also. That's our, our boom mower that flips to the side and you can trim trees with it. But this is a before. Now that's the after. Corneo on the Bontec. Rock shoulders, we do this every year, safety thing. Some places we don't have very wide shoulders because we don't have a lot of right of way. But we generally do 40 or more miles each year. Those are all the locations this year. That's the shoulder machine. That's a picture of the process. You see our truck dumping the rock into the shoulder machine. Shoulder machine, you can see some of the rock out there to the side, and then the, the broom is right behind it and sweeps off the road. You see the next truck back there getting ready to come up after this one's gone. And that's county forces, about $90,000 we spent on that this year. Okay, bridge projects. See, by contract, seven. And of course, our crown jewel is the uh, road, the uh, bridge up over the Arkansas River north of Mount Hope. Here they all are listed, what was budgeted, and they were all under uh, budget. We'll go through them now. This is kind of dramatic, some of the pictures, how bad <coughs> some of them are. Some of these were built clear back in the 30s. We have 582 bridges that we're responsible for. After. And that was done by Claver. Way under budget on that. Uh, this is a bridge north of Central. Uh, this looks fairly decent on the sides, but there, the deck was really bad, and there was some scouring at the bottom. And also it was narrow. That's an after. King Construction, actual cost almost 400000 183rd between 47th and 55th South, that's a before, that's the after. And Dahlinger did that project, 283,000. 93rd North between Broadway and Seneca. I think this is between, not Broadway, this is between Meridian 
and Seneca. Sorry. That just just caught that. Widened that bridge. That bridge goes to the school, Valley Center High School. Sorry. I got ahead of myself. Okay, this is a different one. No, that is um so that that is the one on ninety third. Claver did that, seven hundred and four thousand five hundred dollars was budgeted. Asha was four hundred and three thousand. And we got four hundred thousand of federal exchange funds for that. That was just mislabeled, but that that's the bridge on ninety third. This is on uh 263rd between 39th and 47th. After. After picture. King Construction, 800,000. 103rd South between 71st and 79th before, there's after. After. King Construction, a little over 900,000 cost. 279th between 109th and 117th. Like I said, this is our crown jewel up over the Arkansas River north of Mount Hope. Very big project. Some befores. Had a bad sufficiency rating, very old bridge. After. Well, we had a ribbon cutting on that, and that's a picture of that. And there's, you get the flavor of it real good. That's a good picture. Shows you the whole thing, all the spans. So we're pretty proud of that. We had to wrestle with uh, a lot of environmental problems. Uh, it's a farm market route, a major route to Mount Hope, to, to the grain elevator. And uh, we had to do, we, we let it early. Uh, about a, actually a little over a year ago, we let it and got it built got up out of the water before uh, April so that we could avoid some environmental problems with uh, uh, Arkansas dar darter and the uh, speckled chub, uh, which basically are minnows. Um, and then we also had to work with the farmers to try to lessen the impact on harvest, which, which we did. It was about a 20, I think 22 mile detour route on this. See budgeted 4.7, had a really good price from Donlinger on that, 3.7, and came in good. We were very pleased with that. Uh, here's in-house. You can see we built four bridges, which are the little triangle the blue dots are maintenance that we did. Wanted to show that also, which is takes a lot of time. There are the bridges. You can see the bridge maintenance. The, the bottom line: forty-one locations, eight about eighty-seven thousand dollars we spent in various ways of maintaining bridges. I'll, we'll, I'll show you a couple. This is a before. And after. After cost about twenty two thousand. We do all these ourselves. There's the before, before, it's the other side, and then there's the after. The nice thing about these precast boxes, you can put them in pretty quick. They're already built, so you just set them you dig the old one out, put the new one in, and you have not a lot of disruption to traffic over a long period of time. It's fairly fast. A lot faster than the timber bridges that we used to build. 
about 25,000. There's going to be four, 119 South between Meridian and West Street. This is after. About 68,000. There's going to be four and 231st between 69th and 77th. After. About 36,000. Maintenance, you can see there, it's a little hard for water to get under that bridge, that silt, that silt to come out of fields, filled up the creek. Here's the after. This is before Pawnee, west of 215th West, a before. Oh, and this is during the rain, how it flooded happen to get that picture and then this is an after cleaned out you guys do a great job out there this is a before 127 Street East just north of 61st Street North that's a before and now see after after it's cleaned out and some riprap put in Spent about $87,000 this year on maintenance at 41 locations. Our summary, that's the amount budgeted totally, almost $18 million. There's the actual cost, under budget, about $3 million this year. Once again, there's the map of everything we did. That's it. Any questions? Uh, all right. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Howe. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Spears, I am just extremely impressed. I don't know what to say other than, by the way, this, this slideshow was not required, but you chose to do this to help us understand the things you've done, right? So I, I, the, the pun, of course, is you went the extra mile. Right? <laughs> and, and really, um, you really did go the extra mile. I, I, I wanted to say that I'm impressed with you and your engineers and the, and the crews that were involved in this. I, I wanted to make a, a, just a few comments. I don't understand all the different technologies that you just talked about, but in every picture I saw, uh, those roads look safe, and I like them. They look like the high quality roads that I would like to see in our county. I think our county stands out uh, across uh, the state and maybe even other states. Uh, we have, I think, some of the very best county roads uh, of any place you could probably go and, and compare. And so. You know, I know there's other jurisdictions around here that have trouble with the road maintenance, um, but we have been very good in Sedgwick County and being proactive. And I just want to say thank you for being aggressive and proactive and, and thoughtful and, and conservative and uh, smart uh, as, as you spend money. Um, I noticed every one of the projects that you listed showed that they were under budget. I think that uh, shows a very well, uh, a job well done. A couple of other quick comments. Um, I would say there's a drastic difference between the, the before and the afters. I, I mean, those were projects that needed to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so glad we had the money and budgeted the money and, and paid attention to those things. As you said, uh, this is uh, economic development uh, because people come here, they, they see the great roads, they, they want to travel on those roads, and they have confidence in them. I, I also noticed you had a, a huge diversity of contractors, which I think is really impressive as well. We have a lot of really great contractors. Mm -hmm who are involved in partnerships uh, also with the city of Wichita and other cities around the community that uh, had uh, um, uh, invested in some of the projects. But the, the, diverse, the diversity of contractors just say we have a lot of really, we have a lot of really good uh, folks that are uh, involved in these projects and we're um, pumping money into this economy through these projects as well. And then, um, and then I wanted to say that, uh, uh, you know, I know we had a lot of discussion during the budget cycle about about investing in, in our roads and, and staying ahead of all this. To say that you've touched 20% of our roads, I think is extremely impressive. Um, some of these roads need uh, a, little, a little TLC every five years or so, and so if that's our benchmark, then we're, we're staying ahead of it and we're keeping up and we're, we're taking care of what, we, what we've invested in in the past. And it's important that we spend that money because if you don't spend it now, the, the, the expenses explode down the road. You've got to take care of it now or otherwise it becomes unmanageable. 
And so to, to budget $17.7 million and then come in $3.1 million under budget, I am just extremely happy. I want to say thank you for what you do, and I, I really do appreciate the folks who are involved in this. And I, I'll stop talking, but I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, and it's a great, great, great Christmas present for the county. Thank you so much. Thanks for those comments. Mr. Peter John. Well, thank you. I'm going to segue off of uh, Mr. Howe's comments because I didn't extend it to all 100 over 100 employees down at Public Works because uh, there's a variety of folks. Uh, uh, Dave's, Dave's up front with us today, but uh, there's a lot the of other people behind, behind you. Uh, um, and I can see at least one of them behind Dave right at the moment too, sure. right, Mata? But, uh, uh, but there's a lot more too and uh, wanted to point that out. And, and uh, I enjoyed the pictures for the, you know, I really appreciate the hard work in terms of trying to minimize the impact for folks. I, I think of the Burmack Road Bridge north of Mount Hope over the Big Arkansas River. It was a big challenge for the folks in the area and there was a lot of concern in terms of disrupting because it's just absolutely vital. There's farm folks out there who have property on both sides of the river, and mm -hmm. it was a big challenge to have it closed, and we managed, uh, and I really appreciate Public Works and Donlinger uh, for man managing that project and getting it in. That, that bridge closed, if my memory is correct. Uh, it was about uh, the second week of November last year, and mm -hmm. it reopened about the third week of September this year, mm -hmm. so it was less than 11 months, and that that made a difference, but uh, Mr. Spears, I'd like you to take a minute to talk just for the record and di discuss the fact because you mentioned that a number of these projects were in some of the smaller third class cities and how the county, uh, the county's responsibility for taking care of roads that are within some of those smaller communities uh, when they're a section line road and kind of get that on the record because uh, there's been a lot of talk in terms of what, what we're doing. but. Uh, but Sedgwick okay. County's got a big role, not only for the townships with the bridges, but, mm -hmm. but these section line roads too. Well, the, the uh, class of the city is irrelevant, whether second or third class. What the relevant number is 5,000 in pop population inside the city. So any city under 5,000 population, the county is responsible for the connecting link, any connecting link in that city. Now, connecting links defined as it goes from one county road to another county road and then the link is inside the city so we don't maintain every single road in the city just the connecting link so there's many of those that we do and and we're glad to work with the little cities and and we do that well i think it's important calling it collecting connecting links uh, uh, but the other thing that i'd like to uh, point out is is also that a lot of these projects from looking at the map we're doing a lot of projects in the unincorporated area that's very close to, if not inside some some of the, the, our larger cities like the city of Wichita. And, and I'd like you to take a moment to kind of em emphasize that we really do look at those high traffic uh, areas, even if they aren't in a municipality. Uh, that That's a focus for us in terms of maintaining right. uh, that county road system. Well, we, we have to, if the road is our responsibility, we take care of it. We have to, by law, what, no matter how close it is to the city of Wichita. And quite frankly, if it's close to the city of Wichita, it probably has the most traffic on it. And if most more traffic you have, the more damage you have to a road or, or wears out. So we we look at all the roads every year and determine what we need to do and keep keep an eye on them. Now, we are not building any four-lane roads because of the expense of that. Now, we used to do that years ago, but what we're doing is taking care of what we have, and if, if something needs to be replaced, we replace it in the, like if it's a two-lane, it stays two-lane. Um, unless we see something that is really uh, increasing in traffic to up over 10,000 cars a day, uh, we're, we're just going to Unless it's something like that, we're, we're just going to take care of it the way it is. Dave, thanks for the presentation. Thanks for all the hard work you and your staff do and all the crews do. You do a fantastic job. We, we appreciate it. Thank you for those comments. Make a motion we receive the call, Mr. Chairman. A second. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, call the vote. Commissioner Unruh. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Howell. Aye. Commissioner Peter John. Aye. Chairman Ransoff. Next item, please. Item G, Report of the Board of Bids and Contracts Regular Meeting on December 3rd, 2015. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Joe Thomas, Purchasing Director. 
Uh, the meeting of the Board of Bids and Contracts that was held on December 3rd results in eight items that we'd like to present to you this morning. Item number one is the on-call roofing services for facilities department. This recommendation is to accept the best overall proposal from Mahaney Roofing Company, Incorporated, and establish contract pricing for one year with two one-year options to renew. Item number two is the skylight replacement at the National Center for Aviation Training, Facilities Department. This recommendation is to accept the low bid from Clayco Supply Incorporated in the amount of $278,965. Item number three is the Twin Commander Aircraft Model 690A maintenance contract for the Sheriff's Office. The recommendation is to accept the proposal from Eagle Creek Aviation Services Incorporated and establish contract pricing for two years with two one-year options to renew. Item number three is the pickup and disposal of hazardous waste for household hazardous waste. And this recommendation is to accept the overall low proposal from Clean Harbors Environmental Services Incorporated and establish contract pricing for one year with three one-year options to renew. Item number five, the electronic monitoring service for the Department of Corrections. Uh, subsequent to our bid board meeting last week, uh, we've had further discussion concerning this procurement and it's the recommendation of purchasing and corrections that instead of taking the recommended action by bid board, uh, that we refer this item back to bid board for further consideration. Item number six is bridge improvements, public works. This recommendation is to accept the low bid from PCI Roads, LLC, in the amount of $376,514.80. Item number seven, the 2016 recommended insurance renewals for risk management. The recommendation is to accept the insurance pre uh, premium renewals as listed for an estimated total cost of $696,577. And item number eight, which is the 2015 Ford Fusion Hybrid S vehicles for fleet management. The recommendation is to reject the bid submitted by Shawnee Mission Ford Incorporated in the amount of $184,328. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have and I recommend approval of the items including the adjusted recommendation for item number five. Commissioners, what's the will of the board? I will move the, that we approve the recommendations of the Board of Bids and Contracts as uh, described by Mr. Thomas. Second. Mr. Howell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to make a couple of uh, uh, comments, and I have uh, maybe a question or two. Um, on the item number two with the skylights, can you remind me, this was a uh, an item that, uh, there was an insurance settlement, I believe, that there was money paid to the county that's been in reserve waiting for this uh, expenditure. Is that correct? Yes, I'm, I'm going to have uh, Mr. Mick McBride, risk management, okay. provide you with uh, details. Thank you. Uh, Mick McBride, your risk manager. Yes, this was an insurance settlement from a hail loss. Okay. All right, that's great to hear that. Uh, number item number three. I know when I found out we had a, a, an airplane in the county, I was I was a little surprised by that, and I was concerned about the cost and, and the necess necessity of that. But talking to the sheriff and, and digging into this pretty deep, I, I would believe that just to uh, uh, encourage my colleagues to, to support number three as well, because I think this is actually is a very necessary. A resource they move inmates around the country and, and even across the state very efficiently and and quite often and believe it or not there's a lot of people being moved by this plane so this is a, a very necessary resource and this is a, a necessary cost and they're being very conservative so I although number three has concerned me in the past I've, I'm not concerned about it any longer and I am very very supportive of that I think it's uh, just makes our department our sheriff's department very efficient in, in how they do their business and then my only other comment was um, just want to make sure by accepting this, this uh, by voting yesterday, we're not uh, doing anything with number five. That's being deferred. Yes, and, the num and the number, uh, the last item with the uh, with the vehicles, we're not doing anything with that today as, as well. The uh, last item, uh, number eight. Yes. we are totally rejecting the bid, okay. and in 2016, we will address very the replacement. Well, I'm very supportive of the motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Does anyone from the public like to speak on this issue? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. 
Yes, Mr. And Chair. I think we're clear on what we're doing. Yes. Madam Clerk, call the vote. Commissioner Unruh. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Howell. Aye. Commissioner Peter John. Aye. Chairman Ransaw. Aye. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Joe. Next item, please. Consent agenda. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mike Scholes, County Manager, uh, recommend approval of consent agenda items H through S. Commissioners, what's the will of the board? I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Madam Clerk, call the vote. Commissioner Unruh. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Howell. Aye. Commissioner Peter John. Aye. Chairman Ransaw. Aye. Uh, next, uh, we have. Public agenda and legislative issues. I don't believe we have anything to discuss on there. So we'll move to the other portion of our commission of our meeting. Commissioner, do you have anything for other? Commissioner Peter John. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, December 9th is a significant day in American history. I'm going to mention a couple people who aren't real well known uh, John and Betty Stam. On December 9th, 1934, they were American missionaries in China, and uh, they were captured, and uh, along with their infant daughter and uh, some other people that they were working with uh, by Chinese communists. And uh, several of the Chinese who were with them uh, also ended up losing their lives because they stood with the stamps for various reasons. I won't go into all the details here, but um, it was a significant date in terms of uh, uh, a significant event uh, and uh, another indication that uh, the challenges that Americans face, um, it's not a new situation, uh, what we have here. December 9th is also significant in other ways, too. In 1907, on December 9th, Christmas seals went on sale for the first time in Wilmington, Delaware, for the first time to fight tuberculosis. Uh, in 1993, under an arms control agreement, uh, the military blew up the first of 500 Minuteman II missiles under an arms control treaty that had been <coughs> approved prior to that date. But probably the most significant thing for the folks who are listening to me at the moment on December 9th was in 1970, an entity called ARPA, the Advanced Research Projects Agency in the Defense Department, created connections between as part of a cutting edge spearhead uh, to allow computers to talk to one another thousands of miles apart. I linked four computers at universities in California and Utah. This slowly grew in the 1970s and then along came the personal computer in the 1980s and 90s. In 1989, a British computer scientist, Tim Berners-Lee, used that foundation to create the development of the system that allowed people to navigate what became called the Internet using pages of text and images on a computer screen, what he called the World Wide Web. And so uh, our world hasn't been the same in that regard, and, uh, uh, and we've got uh, literally billions of people who are now connected online because of the events that started on this date back in December 9, 1970. I wanted to get that historic point onto the record this morning. Thank you, Mr. What would we have done without Al, Al Gore, huh? Oh, wait. No. Thank you, Commissioner. Anything else for other? Seeing none, I do believe we have need for executive session. Commissioner Peter John. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that the Board of County Commissioners recess into executive session for 15 minutes to consider consultation with an attorney for the public body or agency which would be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship and that the Board of County Commissioners return to this room from executive session no sooner than 10.55 a.m. The executive session is required to protect attorney-client privilege in the public interest and protect the county's right to the confidentiality of its negotiating position in the public interest. Second. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, call a vote. <coughs> Commissioner Unruh. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Howell. Aye. Commissioner Peter John. Aye. Chairman Ransaw. Aye. We'll now move to executive session.
in my dry room. <laughs> what do you do? Doesn't say right. Yeah, but you don't have Northern Virginia traffic either. We're now back from executive session. No binding action was taken. Mr. Manager, is there anything else come before the commission? No, Mr. Chairman, we're complete. Rounds complete. All right. Need nothing else. We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Production and broadcast costs for Sedgwick County Commission meetings have been underwritten by Sedgwick County. KPTS welcomes comments from the public on its broadcast of the County Commission hearings. Viewers are invited to write to County Commission Broadcast, KPTS 320 West 21st Street, Wichita, Kansas 67203.